Cheers and welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. What causes a stuck fermentation? What? What actually causes a stuck fermentation? If you know the answer to that, it's kind of like, you know, oh, texting can cause car accidents when you're driving. It helps you avoid this video, how to fix a stuck fermentation. Yes, we covered that already. I'm doing a little mini series on fermentation videos and just a few, but I wanted to cover what causes a stuck fermentation to help newer or intermediate brewers from having the problem in the first place. And a lot of times you'll hear these and go, yeah, I know better and I did it. Yeah, I know better and I did that one too. So I'm only gonna go over 13, there's probably more out there. If I do anything referencing measurements or quantities, I'm referencing a five gallon batch so you can scale to whatever you're looking to do. I know some crazy people out there doing 20 gallon batches for home brewing and I'm like, if I did that, I'd have to chop it up and put different yeast and all kinds of crazy things just for fun. It's just the way I am. So let's jump right into this. And number one is dead or non-viable yeast, AKA unhealthy yeast. Yeah, you got your old yeast packet and you're like, hmm, does that say September 2018? Eh, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. I had a London ale yeast I forgot about, and it literally was almost black. Yeah, it went right to the trash. It was a loss. It is what it is. I'm not going to even try to save that. But dead or non-viable yeast. Dry yeast has dates on it too, although a lot of us know we can get away with dry yeast. Dry yeast seems to work well past its date. Um, and I'm looking down here at my Nottingham, and yeah, it's expired. I won't even go into how long ago it's expired, and I might try it anyways. So... Number two, too little yeast pitched. Basically you under pitched. Under pitching, I know a lot of, that used to be very popular to kind of stress the yeast and get all kinds of weird off flavors that might be good, might not be. But under pitching is more hazardous than over pitching any day of the week. So pitching the proper amount of yeast or slightly over pitching is always safer than under pitching. So keep that in mind. Too cold or too hot of wort when you pitch the yeast, yes, that can actually be an issue. So, you know, you get your wort, it's sitting, you think it's 70, it's at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and you're dropping that yeast in there, and it's just like, we're dying, we're dying. Yeah, don't do that. You're gonna kill the poor little guy, scows, whatever, single cell, you know. But yeah, don't pitch the yeast when it's too hot. When it's too cold, it can be an issue too. You pitch that yeast in there, and maybe the yeast isn't, you know, super healthy or super viable, where it can, it can recover and it's gonna go, oh, it's cool in here. See you later, Fred, I'm gonna go sleep. Yeah, they're gonna doze off and flocculate and go to the bottom and yeah, the temperature's gonna come up a little and they're really not gonna want to get busy because you didn't do it properly. Follow the manufacturer's recommendation on temperatures when pitching your yeast. So not enough nutrients in the wort. Yeah, you have Yeast nutrient, yeast nutrient. Um, yeast energizer, a little different, but yeast nutrient. You gotta have the nutrients in the wort. So if you're using any kind of water, if it's spring water, you should be fine, but otherwise you gotta have some nutrients in there. It needs magnesium, things like that. You know what I'm talking about? Number five, not enough O2 in the oxygen, or not enough O2, AKA oxygen in the wort to get the yeast started in their growth stage. Yeah, they don't need a lot of oxygen later on, but they need it to get the growth stage and get that growth going and start repopulating and duplicating themselves and, you know, just going crazy and having a good old time and a big old party. If you're doing, you know, let's say a high ABV, you might even want to really dose it with some serious straight oxygen, but O2 in the wart, number five. Number six, high temperatures. Yes, while you're fermenting, this isn't pitching, this is fermenting. During fermentation, the temperatures are too high the yeast is just literally gonna start dying off. It's just gonna say, I'm done, I can't take it anymore, see you later, I'm dead. Number seven, the opposite, too low of a temperature. Loculate out early or it's going to go into a dormant stage and you're not gonna get the fermentation. So you need to keep that in mind. You know, gotta keep the temperature right. Number eight, fluctuating temperatures can cause over flocculating yeast to just say, sayonara, we're gonna go sleep. Sometimes the yeast isn't even highly flocculating, flocculating if I can say that correctly. And those temperatures, you know, if they're big swings, 
it can really create a lot of problem. And some of the yeast will either die or go to sleep and not come back out. So you need to control your temperatures. That will cause a stuck fermentation. Number nine, low attenuating yeasts. Okay, follow me on this one, okay? This doesn't mean your fermentation got stuck early. It means it never hit the final gravity you were expecting. Why? Because you didn't think about it. You're like, hey man, I'm going for a brute IPA and you're gonna pitch something that says low attenuating. Yeah, your fault. So pitching the right yeast really is probably a better answer, but low attenuating yeast is something you need to be aware of and understand that if you're doing that, you're probably gonna end up with a little slightly sweeter beer. Although there's always exceptions. Number 10, distilled water without brewing salts, AKA spring water if you're a beginner is fine. If you know, you're a brewer who's been brewing for a while, you're probably using RO or distilled and you gotta make sure you have the nutrients in there. Magnesium is really important to yeast, especially you know when they get going. So number 11, chlorine. It can either not be in the water or it needs to be removed. Chloramine is the same as chlorine as far as I'm concerned. It's a little harder to remove. It doesn't just air out. But yeah, chlorine, chloramine, those are nasties. If they're in there, it's gonna cause problems because it's gonna hurt and kill the yeast. And if it does ferment, it's gonna taste probably like a nasty Band-Aid or smell just about as bad as a Band-Aid. Yeah, chlorine, bad. 12, preservatives. Yes, potassium sorbate, to name one. There's quote out there. I even heard there's certain herbs out there, but I haven't proven that one yet. I read that on a, a yeast site and I'm like, what? There are herbs and spices. I'm like, which ones? But um, yeah, yeah, uh, preservatives, especially if you're doing a cider and you go buy some cider at the store and it's got potassium sorbate in there, that yeast is not gonna be happy. Things are not gonna go as planned and you're gonna have a problem. So you need to be aware of that. Number 13, and I know this is probably gonna have some people going, wait a minute. Open fermentation. Yes, open fermentation can cause problems. You're not in Belgium. You're not in under the, in the basement with all the yeast that's been floating around and bacteria that's been floating around there for several hundred years doing its job every single time. No, you're at your house. And who knows? I mean, you might get some bacteria that were on your socks in there. It's not going to taste good. I promise you, there is always a tiny chance it will be good. But from the people I've talked to, they've been brewing for a lot longer than I have. Um, some of them talking 18 years. Yeah, they're like, don't waste your time. Yeah. Close it up. You'll be a lot safer. So yeah, don't allow the bad bugs to get in. We'll call it that, okay? But those are 13 reasons for things that can cause a stuck fermentation. Yes, can cause a stuck fermentation. Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Cheers. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate it.